did that and you achieved this and that, it actually can sometimes, if not checked, destroy the whole reward that a person is achieving. And the reason I make mention of this is many times people say good things about me. I actually enjoy the hate because it gives you that perspective and puts you back into position. Because the praise that inshallah, when Allah accepts and grants us success in the Akhirah, that is when we will be able to uh, be proud of whatever we have achieved. But in this dunya, that temporary praise can actually result in pride. It can actually cause a swelling of the head, if you understand what I'm saying. And it can actually make you think, yeah, man, you know what? I'm a big guy, you know, subhanallah. So the reason I say this is we're talking on a topic. This topic is being a productive Muslim, contributing. What have you contributed? To be honest, it's not about me, it's about us. That's why I say, when you are praised too much, it's not a good thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Behind your back, people can say good things about you, that's okay. But on your face, I think it's not really a good idea to praise a person. May Allah keep us genuine, may He keep us sincere. May He always keep people who can continually remind us of our weaknesses in a way that it keeps us humble. And continuously remind us that it is Allah and Allah alone it is Allah and Allah alone who allows things to happen. And it is the message of Allah that has actually brought us together, like I always say. When we talk about being productive, and I'm diving straight into the topic, for your information, I've already cleared it with our translator here. He's ready for a marathon. So inshallah, we're going. So in actual fact, my brothers and sisters, we firstly owe our existence to the one who made us, the one whom we are going to return to. We owe our existence to him and him alone. So primarily, I'd love to please Allah. Everything I do should be focused around Allah. I am on earth for a short period of time. Allah wants two things from me. He wants me to worship him alone and he wants me to serve the rest of humanity for his sake. The rest of the creatures that he created for his sake. It's Hukukullahi, the rights of Allah I will fulfill and Hukukul Ibadi, the rights of the rest, the rights of the rest of us. Beyond that, we talk of the creatures of Allah at large because that is also part and parcel of the creation of the same creator. So these are the two things. I'm going to be here for a short period of time and I'm going to be leaving. Now, the examples I can give you are so many. A lot of us follow football. What happens in football? You get onto the pitch, the whistle is blown and you start. What's your aim? Your aim is to score goals. That's the main aim, to score goals. If you have scored one goal, is it enough? It's 1-0, you're winning. Is it okay? Can you just sit back and say, right guys, it's fine, we've won. Before you know it, it will be 2-1 in the favor of the opposition because you are now relaxing. But you score 1, 2, 3, even if it's 5-0, you will still want to make it 10-0. If it's 40-0, you want to make it 50, 52-0 to break world records. Am I right? So that you can be known in history. These, this team actually won 52 bar. That's what they call it. Yes, that's what football is all about. When one player drops out of the team or is shown a red card and leaves, does the game come to an end? You got to keep on going. You got to keep on playing without one. We might miss him. He might have been the best, but we will miss him and we will continue playing and continue scoring. And perhaps we may win even if the best from amongst us drops out. Now, let me tell you why I say this in life. We need to understand we have a similar. It's a little bit different. That's why I say similar, not the same. Similar example. We're born at the point of puberty. Allah requires us to keep scoring goals one after the other. Don't be tired don't give up don't be hopeless don't be despondent don't be filled with negatives but keep scoring one goal another one a third one a fourth one goal in which direction against shaitan that's what it is shaitan will make you lazy to fulfill your obligations shaitan will encourage you to engage in prohibitions because shaitan wants to score a goal and that's why if you look carefully allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ 
shay'a. The scales of justice shall be placed on the day of judgment and nobody will be oppressed at all. Whoever does an atom's weight worth of a good will see that good. And whoever does an atom's weight worth of bad will see that bad. That's what Allah says. But there are verses that prove that you can delete the bad. Ima imagine they are scoring and you are losing 5-0. Suddenly you can say, no, let's start again. Let's start again. It reminds me of a little child. When we're losing, okay, game over. Let's start a new game and you're starting a new game. So we can do that. It's a gift of Allah no matter what you've done in your life. Tawbah, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Start afresh and you're, you won't lose the, the good. You will only delete the bad. That is the beauty of Tawbah. It doesn't... It doesn't return you to become as pure as the day your mothers gave birth to you, but in fact, even better. Why better? Because when you were born, you came with a clean slate. When you do tawbah, the good remains, but the bad goes. Subhanallah, the bad goes. So it's actually better for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the turning of a leaf. Now, if you look at this, the goals we're trying to score against, the, against shaitan, my salah in order, my ibadah in order, I must pr protect myself from sin, from harm, from harming others, from that which will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each time that happens, I'm scoring a goal. I'm scoring goals. Then will come the day of judgment because when I die, for example, that's the end of my match. That's the end of my game. In my life, when others around me, close to me have died, perhaps it's equivalent to or similar to a red card being issued to someone thereof. If you become depressed because you lost a husband, you will lose your match. But if you are sad, yes, it's normal to be sad. You collect yourself, you try the struggles. Nobody will ever understand what you've been through, what you're going through, what you, what you went through. Nobody will, but Allah knows and Allah's guiding you. He keeps telling you, you've got to get up, you've got to walk again. If for example, you suffered a loss in your business, it's not the end of the world. You lost a parent, you lost a child, you went through a divorce. It's not the end of the world. Perhaps one person in your life is out. The rest you carry on. You keep on scoring, scoring, scoring so much so that when that person who passed on sees later on in the Akhirah what has happened, they will be so proud of what you've done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be happy with us. You cannot stop your match because one player is gone. You cannot stop your match because two have been lost. You cannot stop your match because three have been lost. Even with seven or eight players, you need to keep on going because there is still hope that that ball might just go through. I'm going to try my best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us. So I am trying to earn the pleasure of Allah and so should you. And this is why we say we do it for the sake of Allah. We enjoy doing good and reaching the hearts because we're scoring goals. I don't need to be paid for what I'm doing because Allah is paying me. Basically, Allah is the one who's going to give us the goodness. It's al jaza it's the reward, it's the recompense. And Allah promises you He's going to give you the best. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So we keep going and when we keep going, we realize that Allah is going to judge us. He says, when there's good and bad, I taught you already how to delete the bad. If you've done more good than bad in weight, then you are fortunate. فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those whose scales are tipping towards the right, they are the successful. They are the ones who are successful. Those whose scales are light when it comes to good deeds, and the bad deeds are heavier. They have lost. They have none others. They have none other to blame than themselves. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever finds goodness, whoever sees goodness, they should thank Allah. And whoever finds in their book of deeds, bad and evil, they have none to blame besides themselves. You could delete what you did. Have you committed sin? Well, Allah says, I love those who seek forgiveness. <laughs> Indeed, definitely, most definitely, certainly, Allah loves those who constantly repent to Him. How can you repent when you didn't even have sin? Hence, we are 
none of us are sinless. So Allah says, I love you when you repent. So don't lose hope when you've committed a sin because there's a step after that that Allah loves so, so much. He actually says it so many times. I love those who turn to me. I love those who seek forgiveness. Never lose hope. You are busy writing your book. The most important book ever is a book you're authoring that you will see being printed and published for you in a way Allah knows best on the day of judgment. Given to you in a way that Allah knows best on the day of Qiyamah. And when you get it in your right hand, you are lucky. When you get it in your left hand, unfortunately, that's not something that we would like. May Allah protect us from that. So my beloved brothers and sisters, you know the book is being written. I need to start writing in this book and I need to make sure I delete the bad. Keep deleting, keep deleting. When you see that you are doing more good than bad, you need to be very careful because sometimes a small bad deed in the eyes of Allah is actually heavier than you can imagine. Give you an example. When you backbite about someone, you know what? It is so bad that the Prophet ﷺ says to Aisha radiallahu anha that if your statement was a droplet of ink and it went into the ocean, it would change the color of the whole ocean. That's how bad it is to backbite to about someone. My beloved brothers, my sisters, learn one thing. Talk good about others behind their backs. Behind their backs. Don't be jealous of one another. You see someone, mashallah, beautiful car, beautiful whatever else, lovely things they have, wealth, a good home. Be thankful to Allah. You're a mu'min. You need to be productive, not destructive. You're going to destroy yourself to begin with. If you are jealous, if you cannot... Focus on the fact that it's Allah who chose the gift for this, for this person. You need to be thanking Allah. Oh Allah, you bless them. I am not going to compete with your kisma, with your distribution of wealth. You distributed goodness. Oh Allah, you bless them. Alhamdulillah, bless me too. But you don't say, what? I'm jealous. I can't. And so on. I mean, you want to marry someone, they end up marrying someone else. Suddenly you hate the innocent bride because you were a wannabe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Why do you hate her? She's innocent. Allah chose her. Perhaps you didn't know or you don't know. Had you been married to the same guy, you might have led a life of depression and sadness. Who knows? Maybe you didn't fit in the puzzle. Everyone has a jigsaw puzzle in their own way. Maybe the puzzle... The piece you are doesn't fit in their puzzle somehow. And you might be thinking it does. So Allah says, hang on, we know it doesn't. We're going to keep you away for your benefit. Be happy with what Allah has chosen for you. May Allah make it easy. So as you're writing this book, make sure every day you write something good. Like I said, number one, don't waste good deeds by gossiping, backbiting, slandering, by accusing false accusations, spreading rumor about someone because you're actually becoming destructive and not productive. You need to contribute in a beautiful way to society, to community, to everyone. Start with yourself. That's why I'm talking first about your self-development. I spoke about the link with Allah. Now I'm speaking about the book because that is connected to both the link with Allah as well as everything else that you are doing. And it's the focus. It's the most important point. So, mashallah, we will protect ourselves from gossip, from backbiting. Like I said, sometimes there's a small deed. You think it's minor. It's minor. The statement uttered at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was, you know what, she's very short. She's short, I mean short, tall. We go on to say fat and thin and slim and whatever else. And we say it in a derogatory way. Do you see how fat that brother is? Notice I didn't say sister. May Allah grant our sisters goodness. Wallahi, they give birth to our children. Then we complain about a little inch they may have put on. Wallahi, my beloved brothers, that was done for you and your sake. And I'm not saying this because I'm encouraging sisters to actually waste themselves. No, take care of your bodies. Make sure that you are, you, you're not lazy. You need to do things. And that brings me to the first point that I want to talk about from that perspective regarding productiveness. The fighting of laziness. If you're lazy, you're going to achieve zero. Wallahi, if you have a... And I'm encouraging you to open a females only gym by the will of Allah. You might have one. You will never ever regret it. If you have a serious females only gym, trust me. For as long as it's done properly, you will be the happiest person. It will change your mind. It will affect, it will affect your body positively. Your thinking, you feel good about yourself. You will actually become productive because you're healthy. You're running, you're sweating, you're racing. Subhanallah, whatever else you're doing within a beautiful halal place. 
and the men as well, it doesn't mean, you know, they say, there was a woman who told her husband, hey, you know what, your belly is starting to pop out, you know, it started to pop out, because men, they look at the women and they say, mm, she's becoming fat, you see. But the man, the wife says, you know, your belly is popping out, so, the, he, so he looks at her and says, well, yours is popping out too. You see, this is a problem, where when we pick something that's going wrong with someone, they want to justify theirs by picking on you. So if someone says, read your salah, say, or oh, oh, fulfill your salah, and you tell them, but what about you? But we're talking about you right now. Okay, we will, let's all do it. But in this case, the wife says to the husband, you know, your belly is starting to pop out. So instead of saying, inshallah, I'll go to the gym, I'll see what I can do, I'll do push-ups, press-ups, I'll, I'll cut down a bit on my food and whatever else and so many no, practical responses. He says, what about your belly? You've got a belly even bigger than mine. So she says, Maybe you've forgotten I'm about to become a mother. He says, well, what? You think I'm not about to become a dad? <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Look at this excuse. She's about to become a mother. He says, I'm about to become a dad as well. So here's my justification. My brother, my brother, I don't even want to explain what that belly may be full of. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So getting back to the point, we need to do something about our bodies. A healthy mind, a healthy body, subhanallah. You will have a healthy mind as a result and you will be able to really give back to your families, to community, to society, to your nation. But if you yourself are so despondent and lazy it's going to start off by you wasting your health because you're lazy in order to to look good to feel good you are going to have to work hard you sweat trust me some people say no i don't need to sweat just stop eating so then they stop eating you go on a diet you know why they call it diet the first part of it is die you almost die when you do that you could stay away from food, I'll die without it, man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So the diet part of it, when you stay away from nutrients, minerals, vitamins, etc. in a wrong way, you are going to be affected by voices, by chemical imbalances, by, you know, passing out every now and again, whatever else is happening to you. Sometimes people don't know why that's happening. They come and say, Sheikh, I have a jinn. I can hear voices. And you tell them, you know what, you have to eat chocolate, you have to have a little bit of red meat, some yogurt, you have to make sure, oh, but I don't have, well, the jinn don't, the jinn don't like those things, so when you eat those, you're gonna be okay. That's just a quick way of, you know, trying to convince them, please eat properly, have a balanced meal, and your jinn will go. You won't hear voices anymore, but we want to be size zero. Why? Because everyone else is size zero. Trust me, trust me. You don't need to be what others are like. In order to be productive, you firstly need to love what you look like according to what Allah has made you. And I always say those who paint their faces in a way that even their phones don't recognize that face. They have, they have an issue with the creation of Allah. They have an issue with the creation of Allah. Imagine. Your own phone, you've got to quickly take off everything and say, okay, that's me. Again, subhanallah. Luckily, we just put a little design. It doesn't need to recognize here and there. But the point I'm sure you've understood it is we shouldn't overdo things. I spoke about it yesterday, but I have to repeat it because sometimes our life is translated into just look, looking good. Looking good in the way that, in, in the sense that we, from the morning to the evening, it's all about painting, painting yourself and doing this and doing Hang on, we need to reach out to others. We need to engage in ibadah. I must score goal upon goal. What happened to the goals? We've forgotten about it already and it's only been 10 minutes. But we need to score more goals and more goals by fulfilling salah, doing good to the neighbor. Once the Prophet ﷺ was asking questions to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, who from amongst you did this a good deed? Who did that? Who reached out to the neighbors? Who did the Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was saying, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. To all of them, imagine how many goals he scored. If I were to ask all of us, myself included, how many of us have helped or reached out to their neighbors today? Today, you might say, no, I, last Eid I sent them something. Subhanallah, last Eid, and you think that's okay. Score another goal, the nets are wide open and there's no goalkeeper. Just go and score the goal, go another one and a third one and do it fi sabilillah. Do it fi sabilillah. You will score and you will achieve and you will definitely never regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. So fighting laziness is something that is really, really important. If you look at the youth, 
A lot of what is destroying the youth is laziness. Look at the boys, the girls, even those who are slightly older. Laziness. And then you expect to achieve, you expect to succeed, and you haven't contributed to yourself. How are you going to contribute to society, to community, to the country, to the nation, to the ummah, to humanity at large, when you haven't even refined or corrected yourself in terms of laziness? You're so lazy. People dream of things. Dream of things and they keep on dreaming subhanallah that's why sometimes you see the young boys you know and i've seen it happening he's sitting in one corner and suddenly he's smiling <laughs> then he's laughing and he's smiling again i say what's happening he says, mm, i'm just dreaming of something big well in order to achieve the dream get up and start doing something about it it's not going to come to you where you're sitting it's good to dream big and it's good to have dreams indeed but you need to now get up from your sleep and, and start fulfilling the dream that's when allah will help you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness so if we realize and understand that in in life we are going to need to keep working hard get up in the morning come back in the evening tired having achieved something and thank Allah one day was spent I scored 10 goals today okay the uh, shaitan might have scored one or two goals at night you make sure you repent in fact don't even wait for the night you repent to Allah you seek Allah's forgiveness you ask him oh Allah I am your slave you know I am weak I'm human I did not sin and transgress against you out of defiance I don't defy you oh Allah Halal is halal, haram is haram, I know. But oh Allah, it's my weakness. My human nature has made me sin, not defiance. I don't defy. You are my creator, my maker. I worship you alone. And I'm not going to defy you, oh Allah. It's my weakness. Allah will forgive you. Subhanallah. Allah will forgive you. He wipes it out. What did you do to your book? You've written a nice chapter. You've deleted the bad, completely gone, totally gone. Subhanallah. Now we come to reaching out to others. Now that I have actually helped myself, I've developed, I've only spoken about one aspect, maybe a few others when it came to gossiping and so on. But this aspect of fighting laziness, thereafter I need to remember. From my home, charity begins at home. Why? How is it connected to what I said? When you are judged by Allah on the day of judgment, yes, he's going to judge you with your belief in Allah, how you tried your best to worship Allah. One of the most important things is your character and conduct. Did you ever know that? Have you ever heard the hadith where the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, khayrukum o khiyarukum, and then he says something? What, what has he said? What does khayrukum mean? It means the best from amongst you. If the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is speaking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the best from amongst you, it means in the eyes of Allah, the best from amongst you. Uh, when Allah judges you, he's going to look also at this aspect I'm about to mention. What is it? Khairukum khairukum li ahlihi. Wow. Wow. Allah is going to judge me based on how I treated my wife. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is going to judge me. One of the things, one of the things is based also on how I treated my wife, my husband, my family members. It was a sacrifice. This morning I was speaking to people saying, you know what? Marriage is one of the biggest sacrifices you're ever going to make. It's not a perpetual honeymoon. Subhanallah. And I'm sure those here who are married, they must be thinking, wow. You know, they say getting married is like jumping into a hot shower. Once you get into it, you realize it's not that hot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah grant us ease. It's not what you think it is. It is way beyond that. It's a sacrifice. Allah gives you opportunity upon opportunity to score goals. You're going to sacrifice for your family and they will sacrifice for you as well. Subhanallah. So my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah is going to judge you on many aspects. One of the important aspects is your character and conduct. Hence, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Khayrukum o khiyarukum ahasinukum akhlaqan. The best from amongst you are those who have the best character and conduct. Develop it. Touch people's lives. What is character and conduct connected to? It's connected to hukukul ibad. It's connected to the rights of fellow human beings. Those whom you are going to interact with. What do they get from you? Do they get a smile? If they get that, you score the goal. What else do they get? Do they get a good greeting? If they get that, it's a goal. Do they get a good handshake? Subhanallah. Please don't give two fingers. 
You know, people sometimes greet with two fingers or they greet you half-heartedly, just like this, uh, by the way. It happens a lot with the sisters as well, where you're just greeting because... Of, and you know what? If someone shakes my hand from among the brothers, obviously, and he gives it to me half-heartedly, it tells me that there's something wrong with this person. They, they have perhaps issues that they haven't resolved. May Allah grant, grant me goodness and every one of us. You give a good, nice handshake. Make the person feel good. Make the child feel good. Make all those around you feel good. That is akhlaq. That is character. You are scoring goals. You are being productive with your time, with your energy, with your effort, with your wealth, with all those things, with your young age, with your health. You are being productive because those things are going to go. They are going to go. Subhanallah. So have you touched the lives of people? If you had, trust me, trust me, if you did this during your life in the Akhirah, it will be one of the biggest reasons that you would probably get Jannah for. Because the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were curious. They asked the Messenger, peace be upon him, O Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people of Jannah, what would have gotten them to Jannah? The people of Jannah, how would they have got to Jannah? What are the characteristics? You know what he said? Two things. Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. The consciousness of Allah, developing the relationship with Allah, and the goodness of character and conduct. Amazing. Amazing. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us another thing that Allah is going to judge us by. Another thing that Allah is going to judge us by, let me mention it and then I will go on to this little announcement. Allah is going to judge us by how much we benefited other people whom He created. Wallahi. Why? Because the Messenger says, خَيْرٌ nasi أَنفَعُهُمْ nasi." The best of people is the one or those who are the most beneficial, who've benefited the rest of the people the most. So ask yourself, how many have I benefited? How many have I benefited? Hence, when Allah gives you position, don't ever be corrupt. Corruption is something that will destroy not your dunya, but even your akhirah. Imagine Allah gave you a position of authority. Now you're pinching money. Now you're stealing. Now you're asking for bribes. Now you're doing something that you know is wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us who are in authority. What happens? You're stealing from society, from community, from your nation. It, you might become wealthy, but your nation is suffering and struggling because you are corrupt. You are part of the problem, yet you are in authority. What have you done? How much are you going to amass? If it was wrong and you amassed a billion, do you know what? You're only going to use a million. Your kids will be killing each other for that amount. Rather, I take a little bit less and I love it when others earn. I love to see others grow. I want to see others succeed. Then you will get Jannah because those were also created by Allah just like you were. You want
want to see goodness for others. Today when we say Zayd ibn Haritha, we say radiyallahu an, because they were all sahaba. They were all companions of the Prophet, but no one, no one is actually bothered about how it started and how it didn't in terms of, you know, uh, discrimination. No, we don't want to discriminate, but we want to know as history what happened. We want to know for benefit, for the deen. We want to know all the history that happened so that we can improve ourselves by learning the lessons. Indeed. So when you are in position, fight the temptation to be corrupt. Make a difference by being a person who serves. You serve everyone who comes. You are happy when you see them grow. That's why to be happy at the happiness of another is an act of worship. And to be sad at the loss of another is an act of worship. Many of us exploit, exploit. You know, there was a mobile company. Okay, I'm not talking of Nigeria, but this is an example. And you know what? They appear to be extremely successful, extremely successful. And they post billions in profit. But you know what? It's very expensive. Number one. Number two is the people who are actually spending money on their are povo, public. People who can't even afford. I'd rather you make it cheaper to communicate for them than to make more money and say, my business was bigger. How many billions are you going to eat? But Allah would know you made it 10 cents cheaper for 20 billion people of, sorry, for 20 million people and how much you earned in the eyes of Allah and improve the quality of your service. Subhanallah. That in the eyes of Allah is better. But the former in the eyes of the people is a big success. Wow, my company is made billions. Are you serving people? Drop the price. Earn the blessings of Allah. When you sell, there are two ways of selling. You can either have a large profit margin and you are catering for a small number of people. And one way of doing things, it's not haram. But the barakah is more when you've dropped the price and made it accessible to people, especially when it is something they need. If it is a luxury, it's a different thing. If you're into luxury things, it's a different thing. But to make it easy for people, accessible, your food and other products that people need, drop it a little. Don't make it such a big profit margin. Think of them. You're serving your nation. The nation will grow. People will pray for each other. People will benefit each other. People will be happier rather than making life so difficult that people steal, they pinch, they deceive. Because you know what? It's very, very difficult. I can't make ends meet. I can't make ends meet. I must contribute to society and community by being upright and honest as a politician, as a businessman, as whoever else in position, as a manager, as a school teacher. Don't be corrupt. Yesterday we spoke of people and I received emails in the night to say, Wallahi, you have addressed a matter that is very, very rampant. I was shocked. I didn't know it was that bad. They say in order to pass the lecturer and sometimes Muslim demands sexual favors. A'udhu Billah. If that is happening, we are doomed. What are we contributing towards society in order to pass for grades? They call it sex for marks. A'udhu Billah. What mark? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. My beloved brothers, my sisters, this is something that needs to be addressed. How can we talk about productivity and serving ummah and serving community and our country when we are so corrupt that we can't even respect the opposite sex? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. So my brothers and sisters, as you can see, Going back to what I said earlier, we should be scoring these goals one after the other in order to fill this book with something beautiful that Allah has asked us to fill it with. We don't want to fill it with that which is ugly, that which we are going to be embarrassed, embarrassed with. My brothers and sisters, have hope. Have hope. Be focused. Work hard. Learn to love for people what you love for yourself. So much so that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, none of you are true believers until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Meaning you love for others what you love for yourself. You want goodness, you want goodness for them. That is a very rare quality. Very rare. You want success, wish success for them. I tell you, when you help others climb the ladder, Allah will already elevate you even above them. When you pull people down, you are below them. That's why you're trying to pull them down. You see? 
When you help people up, you are at the top, you are helping them up. You are already above. Common logic. May Allah help us. Let's not be selfish. Learn to give, learn to be charitable. I've only given you a few examples. These are, these are simple examples, but you need to translate this into something great. I've spoken about laziness. I've spoken about corruption as well. And I've spoken about contributing. Don't be lazy. What are you doing for your family? Be kind to your family. Allah will judge you by how you spoke to your spouse, the words you use, how loving they were. Go out of your way to score a goal. When you go home and you say, I love you, my darling you scored a free goal the nets were wide open what did you do you score a, you scored a free goal you might get not a free kick but a free kiss inshallah May Allah bless us wallahi we don't think of it how many of you have played with your children kissed your children your grandchildren and played with them a lot and shown them the affection and spent time with them it's not only a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu once he was sitting and Al-Aqra ibn Habis was with him and he, the Prophet sallallahu was kissing and playing with uh, his grandchildren. And Al-Aqra says, you know what, you're actually kissing. I have 10 children, I'll never kiss. I haven't ever kissed any one of them. So the Prophet sallallahu says, Man la yarham, la yurham. Whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. The productivity of showing mercy it's something that is grand you show mercy you will receive mercy you don't show mercy don't expect to receive the mercy of Allah if you're a merciful person you will achieve the mercy of Allah when you're merciless what do you expect from Allah when you help people Allah will help you when you do a kind to people Allah will be kind to you. When you protect the dignity of a person, Allah will protect yours. When you cover the sin of a person, perhaps without exposing them in a derogatory way, Allah will cover you. Yes, if someone is a criminal and something needs to be said about them because they are affecting more and more and more people, in that case, you definitely need to alert the people about what's going on. But we're talking about things, petty things. Someone has sinned between them and Allah. You saw it and you said, you know what? Wow. I saw that sister and I couldn't believe it. She actually had a beer bottle in her hand. Ah, subhanallah, you don't have to expose her to the public. You make dua for her, speak to her if you can, address her, address the matter and so on. But by you telling the world, the only thing you've done is you've transferred her sin onto you. That's why I'm saying you don't know. When we arrive on the day of judgment and we see this book, may Allah not embarrass us. May Allah never embarrass us. It's a big issue. It's really a big issue. I pray that we can all score as many goals as we can by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning to the end. When your 90 minutes are up and the whistle is finally blown. And by the way, some people might go into extra time. Allah is giving you a chance to score more goals. Injury time. Score more goals. Subhanallah. Which means if Allah has given you a longer life than the average, you need to be happier, become a good person. As we grow older, and I'm speaking from experience, you know, we've lived with people. As you grow older, you become less patient with the new generations. Because there's a generation gap. Learn to realize and understand you also need to calm down. They say, you will earn Jannah by serving your mother. You will earn Jannah by serving your parents. I agree, I agree. But my beloved mothers, don't use that to blackmail your children. And to, when you are sinful yourself and you're asking your children to do something bad and sinful with the excuse, hang on, heaven is with me, remember? You want to go to Jannah, you're going to have to come through me here. No, 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 no. You yourself might be heading towards Jahannam, who knows? Who knows? Don't do that. You need to be kind parents. To be respected, you need to earn it at times. Allah's created people in an automatic, in a way that automatically they respect their parents. But if you don't nurture that, you're going to lose it. I know of parents who are vulgar. They swear, they abuse, they, they, they discriminate against their children based on the skin color of your own kids. Wallahi, I had a case where a girl was saying that, you know, when we go to the malls, I am told to walk a few meters behind the rest of the family because I'm very dark in skin. Wallahi. And then, do you expect Jannah? Now the mother says, but your Jannah is with me. How? Who said that? Allahu Akbar. We will still try and be kind to you, but respect yourself, my beloved mother.
In fact, we shouldn't be waiting. We should seek the forgiveness of Allah now and turn to Allah. You know what's a big problem? Those who need to hear what I just said now are not here. Did you hear them hissing and saying yes, 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 right? By the way, that was a test statement. I didn't really mean it. Because I promise you, it was meant for me to start with and then everyone else. That's one of the most counterproductive ideas in our minds. Is we think when we hear advice that this is for him. Yeah, say it louder, he's here. Or say, I'm going to record this, I'm going to send it to X, Y and Z. Hang on, hang on. Think about yourself first. Make sure before, it's good to send it to others. It's good to think of 